Hi GCHS, this is Faith, and today we're going to be talking about the JFK files that were just recently released. And this is going to be talking about like our theories and why, what we think really kind of went on, and we're going to be talking about parts in the files and what was released. So with me today, I have... Sam. Dom. Sammy. And Janet. And so today we're going to be talking about the JFK files. And just kind of a disclaimer, this is purely just theories on what we think. We're not saying that this is the real facts. All the only facts that we're using is what we're going off of with the files. Do you think he was an innocent man that no. was framed by the government? No. Or do you think he is the one that pulled the trigger? No, because um, I can't remember like the exact um, time, but Oswald spent a lot of time like. Um, had like a lot of ties with Russia, and I'm pretty sure he spent some time in Russia. And two weeks before, I'm pretty sure it was him, two weeks before he assassinated JFK, he spent some time in Mexico. And it wasn't a vacation. Either that was him or that was somebody else. But uh, he was definitely had some, like, some ties with some other people, and I don't think he was an innocent man. Well, um, looking at CNN, there was um, a file that says that Oswald received a death threat two days before the assassination, and I don't know, like, there's just a bunch of iffy things about that, because in one of the files, I think it was Hoover that said, um, we're just going to say, basically say, he's the assassin, like, we're not, we're not going to try to figure out, you know what I mean? Um, I just think there was something other there. I'm not saying that he wasn't an innocent man, but there's just something there. Yeah. That and I can't. Yeah. Keep keep kind of like going all the way with Janet said. Um, one of the files said that like the um, they were talking about ways to deal with Castro, and um, like Oswald had like a lot of ties. Well, not a lot of ties, but uh, he had some like dealings with Russia, and. I'm just kind of wondering if there was a tie between that or it's just pure coincidence. Yeah. Because um, Oswald's ties with Russia has have had many people believe that he's part of the KGB. And for those who don't know, the KGB is basically like America, is the Russian version of the CIA. So they're undercover intelligence. So people think that his ties and dealings with Russia were part because he was an undercover spy and part of his mission was to assassinate JFK. I also think that it's suspicious that he was shot on live television with full view and cameras and out in the open. JFK? No, um, Oswald. Oh. Yeah. Piggybacking off what Dom said, that is like very, it's suspicious only because you would think that they would guard a man who's suspected of probably the worst crime you could commit in America, and that is killing the president. But. This man, Jack Ruby, was able to so easily, you know, get through all the people and reporters and shoot Oswald and kill him. Last Friday, Trump, like, at that point, everything was going to be released to the public. Everyone was going to be able to see everything, and, you know, we were going to be able to read it all. But apparently there was a mad scramble by the intelligence agency to keep certain things hidden. So, you know, like names or stuff of that nature. But my question for you all is, why do you think they did this at the last minute? I personally think it was because at that time, like 25 years ago, some of these people in these really like guarded files, they didn't know if they were going to be alive or not in 25 years. And so now when this time came, people were still alive. and. Now that we're going to release those files, the only reason why they really didn't release those files is because they wanted to keep the protection of the people because these people were still alive and these they didn't want to put these people in danger. And so they're kind of trying to figure out like how to go about this. And that's kind of I why the, I think they're still kind of in a scramble is just because um, you really can't predict the future really. It's kind of suspicious to me why, as to why they didn't release any of it. Like, I understand, like, some stuff the public just can't know for whatever reason, like public safety and all that crap. But because I was watching a TV show a couple weeks ago, and it was um, talking about Area 51, and um, 
it said basically that JFK had sent away to NASA to ask about like the UFO files, and then I think it was in, within a couple of weeks he was assassinated. Um, CNN.com, they said that the U.S. government released over 2,800 records last night in an effort to comply with the law, and I, I feel like since CNN is saying this, I feel like Trump released majority of the records because he thought that it would make like the citizens happy. So they wouldn't care about the other 300 files that weren't released. But in reality, Americans like to dig deep about things. And I don't know if he necessarily thought that there would be backlash for not releasing such a small portion of them, but there's still so much that we need to know. And there's still so much in those files that are not um, released to the public. And I feel like the real stuff, the juicy stuff is in those files. Yeah. I think um, the worst is yet to come with those because I think even though they've released all these files and like looking at them right now, basically they say like sensitive, um, original held by CIA, like the CIA and there's really no information. I mean there's information on a lot of them, but I think that the public is going to like, you're going to have those conspiracy theorists and stuff like that that's going to try to push for those files to get released. Like 99% sure that actually Trump did want them released, but it's more so the fact of that it's kind of a danger to the people that are involved with these files. And until they're in safe hands or some, somehow <coughs> like guarded, that we it's really dangerous to them to release these files. And like what's what's someone to like these files are not gonna like break or make. Um, conspiracy like it's not gonna yeah. solve a conspiracy thing but it's gonna give like some more background and info to the public about really what happened and kind of give like some insight before and after what happened on the shooting but the kind of unsettling thing to me was like when this all happened and whatnot like when Hoover literally wrote in one of his files like there's nothing further on the Oswald case except that he is dead like he is we'll just say that he is the true assassin that was kind of like, so is, you know what I mean, like, is, is the true assassin still out there? Like, was Oswald the, like, if he was, was he the only one? Because I don't remember who it was, but someone got shot in the leg. If there was only one assassin, how, how does that happen? Things that don't make sense. It's just a conspiracy theory, like, you'll never know for sure. But that's just one of those unsettling things, like, Hoover kind of was like, oh, yeah, we'll just say he's the assassin. We don't know, but he's the assassin. To like you know, just kind of shut everything up. And he, and we're gonna just say this, just so you you have an assassin now. We don't know exactly who it is, but we're gonna just say it's him. Yeah. And I think like if those 300 files do ever get released or somehow get leaked somehow, I think that it won't. You know, like Faith said, it won't squash anything. It won't end anything. Like there'll always be conspiracy theories about anything, but I think it'll kind of not necessarily get closure at all, but it will kind of put me at ease, like, oh. <coughs> CNN says that the government or whoever basically blocked a call to the KGB from Oswald. Um, they blocked it. He tried to call them, and it was, they thought that he was a KGB agent. And that definitely raises some eyebrows because as Faith has been saying, um, you know, he could possibly have a connection with the KGB. And it's just mysterious that a few months before um, the assassination, he was contacting the KGB. Killing, killing a president isn't a one-man job. Like, that it's, took a lot of planning and something much yeah. more like advanced than what one man could have figured out. Because even needed an organization to organize that. Or more, at least more than one yeah. person. Yeah. Because going back to the um, Lincoln's assassination, um, most people know that John Wilkes Booth actually uh, carried out the deed, but then there were several people who were found to be a part of it. And there was a plan, there were meetings, and that's something that people didn't know right away. You know, they thought it was just a crazy man. And in this case, a lot of people do think it was just a crazy man, but there could be so many things that happen behind the scenes that we're not that even might, the government might even not know about, you know? And we obviously don't know about it, you know? Because the government's saying, well, it was, he's the lone assassin. But I don't know, it's, there are questions that 
need to be answered that are not being answered, even with the release of the files. Like, piggybacking off what Domalia said about um, the Lincoln assassination, I don't think the Kennedy assassination was a one-man job, only because something like what happened with <clears throat> Abe Lincoln, it was, there were so many people involved. There were plots not only to kill Lincoln, but the Secretary of State at the time, the Vice President, the Secretary of War, all, the, all these people were planned to be killed, but... You know, thankfully none of them were. Only Lincoln was killed, and then there was a 11-day national manhunt for John Wilkes Booth, and he was eventually killed. But I don't think it was a one-man job only because of the scope of it all. Oswald did find out the parade route, and apparently it was going to be changed. But the way that they had the parade route, which they actually carried out with, um, it was actually like something to do with the fact that it was um, easier to get to or something like that. I can't remember the exact thing, but I personally don't think that there, uh, Oswald was the only shooter because the fact of John Connolly, which was the person in front of him, mm -hmm. and both, like, both Kennedy and Connolly got um, shot, and they really weren't obviously it's shot like the same time just because of how time works but Kennedy was kind of raised just because of how the Cadillac was yeah. and Kennedy was like in the back and then Connolly was like kind of right in front of him and they kind of went as like a at, like an angle but your shot would have to be so precise to get hit both people and I'm not sure if that was intentional or if they literally just meant to shot to shoot Kennedy and it just happened to hit the governor but if that was meant then you had to have such a precise shot to hit both of them that it's almost it's almost near impossible to hit both of them unless you have more than one shooter yeah and people have run computer animations and that's how they show like it's such a small chance of actually some one person with with only one bullet hitting both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the way that the bullets hit them, it could have passed through them it because hit, like, of Kennedy in the side of the head, didn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like right in the temple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I shoot guns a lot, so you know, kind of knowing how firearms work is a little more of an advantage because you know how the bullets travel. And like that's literally almost impossible because what are the odds it's gonna ricochet off Kennedy and hit? You know what I mean? That's not something that just happened. So even if he was the lone assassin, I know that this took so long to plan out. In March of that same year, he used another name to order a gun and he ordered the, the rifle, but he also ordered a telescopic sight so he could see that far away. Because if you have a sight on it, you can see pretty far away depending on what sight you get. You can definitely see pretty far away. And so that the fact that he bought this in March and he carried out the assassination, assassination in November just tells that he's been playing this for a pretty long time. Yeah. And the fact that he, he didn't even use his own name has some kind to do with the whole fact of that, you know, maybe, you know, there was some kind of stuff going on with him. That was, that was being planned. Like, if he did that in March, especially under a different name, I mean, that's kind of smart, like, if you think about yeah. it, to try to carry that out. But that just kind of adds on to, like, why, why did he use a different name? Thanks for listening, guys. And just to kind of reinstate, what we said was not facts. We're just kind of stating our thoughts. So I want to leave you, you listeners, with a question. What do you think fully happened in the JFK assassination?